Mungatana. Let me yeah. bring in uh, Senator uh, Moses Kajuang. I mean, th this has an effect of an extension, is it, in terms of uh, um, it, its indictment on, on the country's political elite in having, uh, I mean, no soft spot for the rule of law and constitutionalism in general? Yeah, I, I think we need to be listening to Diana more. We need to be listening to civil society because the mistake we make as politicians is that we want to listen to ourselves. We want to talk to ourselves and we want to convince ourselves. These people in civil society, sometimes they bring certain dimensions and perspectives that we might not see sitting in those leather chairs in parliament or sitting in the executive. It is true that Kenya, Kenya's biggest problem, the president frames it as debt. To me, it is corruption. It has been corruption. It remains corruption. Debt is just a symptom of the problem. Most of that debt mm -hmm. is unsustainable because they were corruptly acquired, or even if they were properly acquired, they were implemented in a corrupt manner. All institutions in this country are rotten, from the executive to the legislature and to the judiciary. All these institutions are a reflection of the Kenyan society. So it will be, I think, uh, foolhardy to say that there is one institution uh, that is beyond reproach. Correct. And it, we, I, I think we must start from there. Yes. But where do you have the biggest opportunities for corruption? It is in the executive, because they are the ones who manage the three trillion budget that we have every year. And we know that in Kenya, corruption is driven by those with budget and those with the power of the purse. A president who is presiding over an executive and a government that is not necessarily clean. In the eyes of the people, and when we listen to the civil society, mm -hmm. when we listen to Kenyans on social media platforms, because that is where now the conversation has shifted, you find Kenyans are disillusioned with the manner in which the executive is conducting itself with regards to corruption, integrity, and good governance. You've got a public that is very concerned about parliament, Parliament, the institution that Mungatana and I sit in. And it's not just about the decisions that Parliament makes. Of course, there's a big, big problem. In fact, many of the laws that Parliament passes, if they were taken to court, many of them would be shot down. I'll give you an example of amendments that we made to the Climate Change Act that was to entrench carbon trading. Yeah. And we did it in the run up to the Africa Climate Summit. I'm the chair of the Climate Caucus in the Senate. I was quite happy about that kind of amendment. But the manner in which it was processed, first reading is done on Tuesday, second reading is done on Wednesday, and third reading and assent is done on Thursday. They, I mean, that's a Simon Maconde kind of bill, <laughs> which if anyone was to take to court, it will be challenged on lack of public participation. Would you then blame the courts of law for that? No, you'd blame parliament. So for the president to be pointing at the judiciary, it goes back to that biblical saying that you must first deal with the log in your eye before you start pointing out to the speck in other people's eyes. Is the judiciary clean? Perhaps not. But is this the kind of healthy conversation we need at the start of the year? You know, my friend Senator Mugatana frames it as a conversation. It, these are threats. This is intimidation. These are symptoms of tyranny because if the balance of power between the three arms of government, the executive, legislature, and, um, and, and the executive. Yeah. This, that that uh, delicate balance is what constitutes rule of law, not rule by law. Why would the president extend uh, you know, his frustrations to the judiciary for failure of government policy? And yet the judiciary is saying, for you to introduce public policy, for you to introduce such far-reaching changes, there are certain procedural steps that you must go through. I think that is basically what the court is saying. I don't think the courts are to blame for the Kenya shilling being 160 to the dollar today. Okay. I don't think the courts are to blame for the mess in CBC. There are so many other things that the president could focus on. And unfortunately, you, you know, I've, I've, um, in the last one year, I've been rather quiet because I keep saying that I've been giving this administration the benefit of doubt thinking that after one year in office, they will realize that it is no longer about campaigns. It is no longer about sloganeering. It is about serving Kenyans, those who voted for them and those who did not vote for them. But you see, there's been something very consistent with this government. They've been looking for bogeymen from day one. From the day the president was being sworn in, you saw the deputy president looking for a bogeyman in the name of Uhuru Kenyatta. And it went on, the next bogeyman became Raila Odinga. 
And now in this year, when we thought that this government was going to sober up Thank you. and look at the problems of Kenyans, they found another bogeyman in the judiciary. Thank you. I just want to encourage uh, Senator Mugatana, yeah. who's an advisor to the president, yes. that let us focus on the real issues. <laughs> can and I, Senator Mugatana, the time Senator Mugatana was, uh, was, was doing law, I think that was the night. <laughs> we had a different jurisprudence. <laughs> the president was above the law. We are in a different constitutional dispensation. We've got a population in this country that does not care about those days when the executive could get away with anything without challenge. Judicial authority that is exercised by the judiciary is exercised on behalf of the people of Kenya. And so far, I think, if you are to rank the three arms of government, yes. judiciary, legislature, and executive, Kenyans would rank the judiciary higher than the other two. Okay.